Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna replace our old receptacle with a GFCI electric receptacle. We're gonna show you how to do electrical GFCI wiring. If your outlet trips, you may wanna consider getting a GFCI electric receptacle. This GFCI comes with a temper resistant shutters designed to prevent accidents. So it's ideal for households with children. Stay tuned for the whole video. Okay, today I'm gonna show you how to swap out a regular receptacle with a GFCI. If your outlet trips, you may wanna consider getting a GFCI electric receptacle. We have a microwave and we have the fridge plug into this whenever you turn on the kettle it pops the breakers well, we do have a bar that is also having all these in so that has a trip so it trips itself however we need one for here for the fridge and the microwave because right now it doesn't so every time it pops we have to go and flip the breaker so we're going to replace this with this so next time it pops it will just shut that off and we just have to press the button instead of going downstairs and change the right now i'm going to preface this by saying do not do this at all this is for demonstration and educational purposes only now how does this work well basically you have three wires you have the white which is the neutral and then you have the black, which is the load or the hot, depending if this is coming from another receptacle now. So this is a load in this case. And then you have your ground. The ground is the copper wire. It's always screwed in, usually to like a little screw. You see that right there? That's the ground. So first things first, you want to undo these cables here. So we've got two neutral wires and we've got two black ones. Now you won't encounter this, but usually you're going to have one. Now when you take these out, these are going to be a little twisted. So you want to make sure you flatten them out and then put a cap on them. You could just remove the whole screw entirely. However, it's a high chance that you're gonna flip the breaker if you touch one against one. So just letting you know, because they are quite, quite close together. But we managed. I already popped the breaker, so let's see if I actually did or not. So this essentially is like an electrical pin. It tells you if there's power or not. So you can see that this one has no power, but this is the one that's coming probably from that other receptacle there. So it goes to the top, and then from this one, it's going to carry on to the next receptacle, wherever it is in the house. Okay, so I'm going to show you this new one. So again, it's got these two buttons. One is reset, one is test. So if there's a pop, one will lock in. You're going to get, this light's going to turn red, likely. Otherwise, it's green. Sometimes it's different, depending on the GFCI. And uh, then you'll be able to just press the button, and then you won't have to go downstairs for the breaker. Now, there's this little label here that says... Attention, the low terminals under this label are for feeding additional receptacles. Miss Warren can leave this outlet without ground fault protection. So this is what we're talking about here. We've got two extras that are taking the power from this one once it's connected and feeding it to the next circuit down the road. Now this is the bottom, this is the top, okay? We are likely gonna need longer screws, so that's something to consider because of these tiles here. All right, so we have a wire here. If we want to lock this in, you see? We just put this behind and we need to undo this a little more. Now don't do this all the way because this will fall out. So only a couple more turns, just enough to get the wire in behind and then we're going to retighten it. And then the ground is at the very bottom here. This is what I don't like. They should have put it somewhere here, but I guess if they put it here, it would have been bad. All right, so let's remove that one too. Now let's go connect the ground first because ground is always the toughest in my opinion. And that's it. Now we're going to tighten this back up. So let's go and put this one now. You can see that I pressed it, but you can still see some of the wire. So in this case, we're going to clip it because it's too much. So we just want to have enough to go in without actually seeing the wire after. Okay. Make sure you can't take it out. And now we're going to place this one at the top. Behind. There we go. You can see right here how nicely it's in there. And then let's tighten it up with the drill. Okay, so now we're doing the last one. Now remember, we're still under. Now if you go here, you can see nothing, no power. Once we put that in, power is going to go into everything. I can't kind of show it to you on this side, but what we're going to do is we're essentially going to go and flip it the other way and we're going to put, feed that cable underneath. So here it is. This is the cable we just fed in. It's screwed in. Now I'm going to show you. Power. But look, still no power. No power, no power. Why? Because we need to turn it on. So let's go and press the reset button. There you go. Green light means it's working. See? So now we have power here, power here. And then these are neutral, so you're not gonna have power here. 
All right, so the last thing that I like to do, which you don't have to with these receptacles, grab electrical tape and just kind of go around all the metal parts a few times. It just adds that extra level of surge protection. All right, and that's it. Now we take our screws back and let's hope that they're long enough to go into this. Okay. And now let's add our screws. All right, nice and flush. That's how to change a receptacle to GFC. And I wanna show you, if I want to turn this off right now, I press that, you see that? And that almost like kills the breaker. If I turn this on, it reestablishes the power.